guys and welcome to another video. Today it's Advent of Code! It's that time of year again and I really want to see your solutions so leave those in the comment section down below. If you want to support the channel there is a link in the description to different affiliates where you can get great deals on things and there is also a donation link if you want to donate a coffee to me in order to improve the quality of the channel. Welcome to day one, Histor historian hysteria. The chef historian has always pre present for big Christmas sleigh launch, but everyone, uh, nobody has seen him in months. L last anyone heard, he was visiting the location that was historically, uh, historically significant to the North Pole. A group of senior historians has asked to accompany them as they check the places they think was most likely to visit. Each location is checked, they will mark it on their list with a star. They figure the chef historian must be in one of the first 50 places they look. So in order to save Christmas you need to help them get 50 stars in the list, their list before Santa takes off uh, the December 25th. Uh, uh, collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will uh, be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck! You haven't uh, even left yet when the group of Elvish senior historians has already hit a problem. The list of locations to check is currently empty. Uh, eventually someone decides that the best place to check the first would be the chef historian's office. Upon pouring into the office everyone confirms that the chef uh, chief historian is indeed nowhere to be found. Instead the elves discover that assortment of notes and list historically significant locations. It seems that to be, uh, to be the planning uh, the chef chief historian uh, was doing before he left. Perhaps these notes can be used to determine the locations to the search. Throughout the chief's office um, the historically significant locations are listed not by name but a unique number called a location ID. To make sure that you don't miss anything the historians split into two, two groups each search the office and trying to create their own complete list. Uh, of location IDs. There's just one problem. By holding the two lists side by side your puzzle input it's quite uh, quickly it becomes clear that the lists are aren't very similar. Maybe uh, you can help the historians reconcile these lists. Uh, maybe the lists are only off by a small amount. To find out pair up the numbers and measure how far they are par pay, uh, part. Pair up the smallest number in the list with the smallest number in the right list and then the second smallest in the left and the second smallest in the right and so on. With each pair you figure how far they are apart and you need to add up all those uh, distances. For example pair up three with the left with seven you get um, a distance apart of four. And so on and they have an example down here and the total distance is these added up together. So the actual left and right list contains many location IDs. What is the total distance between those lists? So uh, this day I screwed up with the audio. So I didn't record anything I said. So the recording will be very boring to look, um, listen to. So let's go through my code instead here. Uh, when it comes to the actual reading of data. I prepared this uh, with a read input this year. So I have this read input which takes a boolean of test at the day and if we want to take the input part b if we ever get that. And then we have a couple of directories test b, test a, input b, input a and then we will just read those in with a buffered reader here. So we take the test there that we created up here we read day one as a txt. And then each line here we will create from a, we create a list of lines which is this array list where we use this line for the string that we want to use for the reading. And then while a line is equal to a read line and not null because we don't want to, we want to stop when the list is actually full. And 
then we will return that list. So this function is fairly simple, simple, simple. If we look at day one, my solution was first to read the input and then create two lists. Then I did a lot of examples back and forth in order to split this into two and get the first part and the second part. I used a split function, didn't work, and I tried to re remove and replace all the white spaces. It didn't actually figure that out either. So what I uh, stop, stop, started doing instead was creating a pattern. So this pattern takes the first number in uh, parentheses here. So we say we want a digit and we want plus. So all the digits you find, and then we will take everything that is not a digit after that. So this up uh, arrow is saying not in this list. So anything that is not a digit, we want to have a bunch of those, and then we will have digits again. So we will get two groups here. So we start going through the lines, and if the line is empty, we will just continue. We run our matcher. If we find a match, then we will take the left list and add group one to that. Then we take right list and add group two to that. Then we need to sort both of these lists. So we do that. And then we will go through and have a result here. We start at zero. We will go through the list of the left array because the lists should be exactly the same length. And then we print out all the results here. And I take, if the right hand side is bigger than the left hand side, I will add the number up. Uh, we take the right minus the left. And if the right is uh, smaller than the left, we will take the left and minus that with the right and add that result up. And if they are equal, then the number will be zero. So we will not add anything up for that. And then we will uh, print out the result. So we get a bunch of number here and we got a result. Our day part two. Your analysis is only confirmed that everyone feared. The two lists are and location IDs are indeed very different. Or are they? The historians can't agree on which group made the mistake or how to read most of the chef's handwriting. But in the commotion, you notice that an interesting detail. A lot of the location IDs appear in both lists. Maybe other numbers aren't location IDs at all, or rather misinterpreted handwriting. In this time, you need to figure out exactly how often each number from the left list appears, appears in the right list. Calculate the total similarity score by adding up the, each number in the left list uh, after multiplying it with the number of times it appears in the right list. Here are an example again. For these example lists, uh, the process of finding the similarity score. Uh, you take the first number, which is three, it appears on the right list three times, so the similarity score is three by three, which is nine, and so on, and then we will add those up and get the result of 31. Well, once again, consider left and right hand list, and uh, what is the similarity? So, what we did here, we started with the test case here and we read all the lines. We will create these left and right lists again. We use the same pattern and we read them in exactly the same. So the only thing that differs is this part. And because I was expecting this number to be huge, I started using bigint. And bigint is something that is stored in a different way so you can actually calculate I think in infinite numbers so numbers that are huge really large so we go through the left list and get the input here and then I will take account on how many times I find it and then we take the integer the right hand side and we check if these are similar and because we have a bunch of numbers uh, they could be different so we need to not check the actual objects. We need to check the int value in the objects if they are similar. So we take a's int value and b's int value. And if those are equal, we will add one. Otherwise we add zero. So the count will count up here. Then we will take this result and it's equal to the addition of the multiplication. And we take a big int value of a 
multiplied by a big int value of count. So that means that we will get a result here and we print the result out. And for the test case, it was 31. So I screwed up with the audio and now I just had to go through the solution. Tomorrow, hopefully you will see the actual going through and actually solving it as well. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you want to show your own solutions, leave those in the comment section down below. I want to see all your solutions uh, for day one. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.